today we're going to be learning how to make a wrap bracelet with Tyla beads, which have two holes running through them. Makes for a wonderful, colorful bracelet that's very comfortable to wear. First I'll be going over the materials. We're going to need five, four to five different colors of Tyla beads to create a nice little palette. Secondly, we'll need 1.5 millimeter cord. It should be a stiff cord. I like to use Greek leather. Indian leather works just as well, or Japanese waxed cotton. But today we're using our Greek leather in a very neutral shade. We'll be using tough cord, size one, in brown. Beeswax. A little GS Hypo Cement, some beading tweezers with fine tips. These are very essential for this project. We'll need a button. The holes must be large enough to accommodate that 1.5 millimeter leather. We'll want two beads that fit over the leather, so two beads with 1.5 millimeter or larger holes and two beads that are slightly smaller than your Tyla beads as we will be graduating the Tylas onto the cord. You will also need a miscellaneous piece of rat tail to secure your project to this wonderful deep dish tray we are working with right now and a tape measure. So the setup for this project is it's going to take a little while. You'll want to allow for at least 20 to 30 minutes to set it up. But once you get it set up, you can put the project down and come back to it. It's kind of like knitting that way. So what we're going to want to do first is prepare our bracelet to be strapped down to this deep dish tray here. And these are very nice because once it's strapped down over the top, you can really work underneath with your hands. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare that. Okay, so to start this project, you're going to need to cut your leather first. And to be on the safe side, we're going to make this bracelet wrap around twice. And to accommodate most wrist sizes at first, um, I would be safe and cut a 40 inch piece of leather. You will want to double that length in tough cord. So I cut about 80 inches in tough cord. And you're going to want to use this beeswax to condition your tough cord. So just run your thread through your beeswax to get a nice coating on there. and set your beeswax aside. Next step, you're going to take your button and you're going to thread your tough cord first through the buttonholes. Bringing it down halfway. just like so. Next step, make sure these two lengths are even. Then you're going to tie an overhand knot that sits right behind the button to secure the tough cord to the button. I'll show that. Bring it through. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get the knot close, just like so. Next step, we're going to bring the leather through the button the same way we did with the tough cord. And to get the leather to fit through these holes, I like to just take some fine cutters, flush cutters, and cut it, the leather at a nice little angle there.
Make sure these two pieces are even. Pull all the way through. So now you have your tough cord sitting nicely in between your two pieces of leather, the two tails that are coming down. Next part of this process is to strap this project to the board so we can begin. So to get this secured to the board, what I have done is set the tough cord kind of to the side here because we're not going to strap that down. But I've taken the two tails of leather and I made an overhand knot, just a simple temporary overhand knot to join them at the base. We're going to take a piece of rat tail, about a yard, miscellaneous cord. I like to use rat tail to secure it down because it's easy to untie if you want to spot check your measurements. So first thing we're going to do is just take this piece of rat tail, put it, you know, fold it in half. Loop this around the button, just like so. Pull taut over the board. Flip the board over. We're going to take one end of this rat tail and bring it through the leather, just like so. Pulling taut. And just tie a little overhand knot or a bow. Overhand knot's fine. So now, as you can see, we've got it strapped down to the board with a good amount of tension there. You can kind of twist these pieces of leather so they sit where you want them to. We can move this up. So we've got our tough cord, two pieces of tough cord, coming through the center here. And the very first technique we're going to cover is silk wrapping, because I want to start this project out with a nice little silk wrap to give the button room to move around. And when you put it on your wrist, it'll just function a little bit nicely, or a little more nicely. Okay, so to begin, I'm going to start my first silk wrap right here, as you can see. In the beginning of this sample, we start with a nice silk wrap with about 10 wraps, just to give the button a little room to move around. So I've cut a 10-inch piece of olive Ceylon. I wanted to kind of tie in the palette of the Tyler beads into my project by choosing a green piece of Ceylon. And we're going to just make a loop with our fingers here. There's going to be a short tail and a long tail. The long tail is going to be used to create the wrapping part of it. First we're going to just lay this across the leather and I've brought the two pieces of tough cord in the center here because we're going to be wrapping around all of this. I'm going to lay it flat just like so. And I don't know if you can see this, but we've got the short tail on top, long tail on bottom. What I'm going to do is take the long tail close to the button here, and I'm going to go up and I'm going to wrap around the short tail and around all of those cords. first wrap is the hardest. And we're going to be wrapping in the direction of the loop. Three, four, five. I'm going to go about ten times. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now pinching with my right hand here, I'm going to pinch over all of this whole wrap. I'm going to take that long tail 
bring it through the loop, just like so. Then this short tail here, I'm just going to pull that down. Now don't pull it down too tightly at first because what I'm going to do here is when I pull this short tail, it's going to bring the knot in the center of the silk wrap. But before I do that, I'm just going to take a little bit of our GS Hypo Cement. It comes with a nice precision applicator. And I'm going to dab just a little tiny bit of Hypo Cement on that knot there where the cords join. Now carefully, I'm going to pull might even need a little set of pliers for this. So very gently we're going to pull that knot. You can kind of hear it click and it's going to rest right in there. I'm going to let that glue dry just a little bit. Then with this wonderful thread burner, this is one of my other favorite tools, we're going to thread the thread through get it right where we want it before we push the button and then push and that thread will cauterize right there and you can even go back and just get it in a little closer. Do the same thing to the other side. So now we're moving on to the latter portion of this project and we're going to start with a smaller bead as we have done here. It's just slightly smaller than the Tyla beads because I want to create a nice graduation before I eventually move on to the squares. So I have selected a two millimeter little hex bead that'll fit right, really nicely in there. So we've got our pieces of tough cord. We've got our leather. I've separated it a little bit so we can see more of the frame. Work with it a little bit easily, more easily. And uh, first step we're going to do is Grab one piece of tough cord with your left hand, grab one with your right hand, and we're going to wrap underneath, bringing it up and through the frames, and out, just like so. I'm going to do that twice. So under, up, and through. First bead we're going to thread on is our 2 millimeter hex bead, 2 to 3 millimeter hex bead. So with my right piece here, I'm threading through one side, just like so. Before I get too far, I'm going to take my left piece and I'm going to thread in the opposite direction. Pulling each end so that that bead snugs right up in there. And now we're going to move to the Tyla beads. Tyla beads are a little bit different because they are double drilled. So they are these nice little square beads but they have two holes in them. So you have to treat each bead like it's actually two beads. So in between each bead or in between each hole that you're going to be laddering, you have to complete a wrap in between. So under, up, and through. I'm going to take my right side, I'm going to thread it through the top hole, this top hole here of the Tyla bead. Before I get too far, I'm going to take my left piece, I'm going to thread it in the opposite direction in that same hole. This is a project you're going to need tweezers for. I'm just going to let you know that right in the beginning. Go ahead and pull. And your Tyla bead's going to want to sit just like this, which is fine, because now we have to complete another wrap up, under, and through, and thread back through the second hole of the Tyla bead. So here is my right side.
my left side. I'm going to take some tweezers, pull this end, pull this end. Do this very slowly in the beginning so that you don't make any mistakes. And there we go, we've got our first Tyla bead on. Now before we add our second Tyla bead on, bring both cords around, up, under, and through. And now we're ready to add our second Tyla bead. And I'll do this again so that you can see. I'm just going to take a color, a random color, I've chosen the turquoise. I'm going to thread my right side through. I'm going to take my left thread, thread through the opposite direction in the same hole, pull, and see how it sticks up? That's good. Bring the tuck cord around, under, and through. This is why the beeswax is so nice, because as you're threading, you'll realize it's nice to have a stiff end. Tweezers. And make sure when you're pulling these cords that you're not catching the others as you're pulling. There we go. And I'm going to continue to ladder a few Tyla beads on and then I'll show you how to wrap it up. Okay, so we are reaching the end of our bracelet and I have decided to make it so that it wraps around my wrist twice. And in order to find out that measurement, what I did was measured my wrist with a tape measure and doubled that measurement. And that's where I want it to secure. So, as we come to the end of this bracelet, I'm going to ladder on uh, my second two to three millimeter bead so that it tapers towards the end. So bringing my tough cord up, under, and through as I did before. So bringing my tough cord up, under, and through as I did before. I'm going to put that little bead on there. the tails so it fits nice and snug. Now at this point I'm going to wrap my tough cord underneath, bring it up, over, and across just like so and I'm going to tie an overhand knot and secure. I'm going to tie another knot so we've got a double knot here. And I've done this a few times, so bringing, crossing through the back, bringing the tails through the back, bringing it up around, tie another overhand knot. I did this about three times and then I glued it. A silk wrap is going to be covering this, so you don't have to worry about it looking perfect. It just has to be secure. Take a thread burner for the ends of these cords. It's nice because it cauterizes the tough cord, so it's not going to go anywhere. 
Next, we're going to do another silk wrap to cover this little area right here, just as we have done in this sample. And to keep it consistent with the first silk wrap, I'm going to make it 10 wraps before I bring the knot through. And to spice it up a little bit, I'm going to choose, instead of the olive where I chose before, I'm going to choose maybe a turquoise or an oyster color Ceylon to kind of bring in these colors here. And I'll go ahead and show what that looks like. I completed a silk wrap over where I tied those knots with the tough cord and I used our Ceylon and nickel to kind of bring in these metallic -y silver beads. And as you can see, we're reaching the portion we're creating the button loop for this bracelet. So I turned the board to the side just so it's a little bit easier for you to see. But I'm going to go ahead and start my second silk wrap. I'm going to kind of take the button that I used earlier. Here's a second one just for reference. It's the same size. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want that to fall. You can even take a pen and just make a little tick mark right there where you want the button or where you want the silk wrap to begin. But like I said before, before we glue it, we can kind of adjust it. So I took a piece of sage, Ceylon, to kind of tie in these turquoise colors here. And I'm going to go ahead, create my loop like I did before, bringing the long tail around and wrapping in the direction of the loop. Three, four, five. Now I can kind of switch. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Going to spot check it one more time. Maybe I'll just go ahead and do one more. And bring that tail through that loop, pull the short end so that knot rests right in there. And that looks like it's going to be about perfect. Now, before I pull the knot all the way through, I like to dab a little hypo cement in there before I pull, just to keep it secure. I mean, this is going to be holding the button loop in place, so you can't be too secure. I'm going to take my thread burner, burn the ends of these, so it cauterizes it. After you have completed your second silk wrap, as you can see, I'm going to just show the other example here. We're at the part of the bracelet where we can take it off the board, and we'll have these two little tails left over. This is where I take my two pebble beads that will fit over the 1.5 millimeter, and I slip them on and just tie a simple overhand knot at the ends of each, and it's kind of nice because it drapes down when you wear it, just like so. And there we have it.